Thank you, thank you. I did not earn that yet. Afterwards, of course, you can, but I haven't done anything yet. Um, I have a couple of complaints. Can I start there? Um, no one told me I could have worn a glittery dress. <laughs> Margaret. Also, she did a costume change, and she's got pipes, and I'm so offended that she's so talented. Um, I, should, I should actually start saying before I go places, no one who sings better or preaches better than me can go before me. And that happened both tonight. So I'm super offended and I'm never coming back. No, I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. I am for sure coming back. Um, I am so honored to be here. Thank you guys for having me. And for those of you who traveled so we could hang out, that's really fun and kind of you. Um, can I just start by praying for us? Um, let me do that. Yeah, Lord, we just, um, I just repeat back what we already sang. We, um, we just want to know you. Um, there is no one like you. And so, um, yeah, sh- show us who you are and fill us with your love. That is, that, that is literally all I want tonight. Would you just show us who you are? You are irresistible. <laughs> and, so, and so you just show us who you are. And we'll believe you. So um, we just thank you. Um, We thank you for the worship team that they open doors um, for our hearts and for the Holy Spirit. And so we just, we we say thank you. And God, we just ask that tonight you would meet each of us in our unique story. That we would um, experience you, not only in this room, but at the after party and the drive home. That we'd experience you in a way that, that we say... Only God could have known that. Only God could have known that. So show us who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now I'm going to go costume change into my glittery dress. I wish, (laughs) Margaret. (sighs) Note to self, next time bring a dress. Also, I'm missing Mardi Gras. I hear that's a thing here. I'm so offended. I love parties. Um... Let me tell you a couple of things about myself if this is our first time being friends. I just feel like it's really appropriate to introduce yourself like a grown-up. So my name is Annie, and uh, she is correct. Jennifer was correct. I am on, um, I'm from Nashville. I am not technically on staff at church. I just pretend to be, like I just preach sometimes. So don't tell Crosspoint that she said I was on staff. Um, but I also, you should know a couple of things about me. If we were getting coffee, this is what I would tell you. I'm incredibly loud. This is my normal talking voice. I don't even need a microphone. It's just the right thing to do. And so I apologize for the front row and you're welcome for the back row. But uh, I, I should warn you that because I also am my own biggest fan. And at some point today, I'm going to crack myself up (laughs) or tomorrow, one of the two, probably both. And what will happen is my laugh is my loudest thing. And are any of you school teachers? Anybody teach in school? Yes. Bless you guys for being somewhere on a Friday night. I used to teach elementary school, and on Fridays, I was like, see, none of you. I'm just going to be watching television. Uh, But when I used to teach school, and I think mamas can do this too. I haven't gotten to mama yet, but I think moms can do this too, where like, I would be teaching math, and I'd be thinking about how we had to line up for lunch. And, And I still do that in this job, where I will be saying one thing to you, and the next joke comes to my mind, and I crack myself up. And I have to just warn you that it may blurt out (laughs) in laughter at my own self, but then I'll let you catch up and you'll enjoy the joke too at some point. Um, The other thing you should know is I'm kind of a crier. I'm feeling fine right now, but that remember song and video had me like puddling. So I can't, I don't even know what my face looks like and I can't see it. It's still here, but I mean, I just was, that song and that dress, when she dropped her cape, I was done. I was just done. I was done. Tomorrow, can I borrow that cape tomorrow? Because I've got this part in my talk tomorrow that I think it would really go over. So I'll start with it on and I'll be like, in Revelation, woo. People are going to be falling out left and right. Going to need some of those modesty cloths. We got a lot of things we need tomorrow. So I'll just need you to bring that back if you don't mind. Um, so that, and those are the things you need to know about me going into it. I'm not feeling like crying right now, but it's probably coming back. We'll see. When I teach to men and women, I like to warn them that I cry. And then I say to the men, you don't have to fix it, right? Like nothing's broken. Sometimes that's just what a face does. 
right? And I often have to, because the truth is when I talk about Jesus, sometimes my face just leaks. It's just what happens. I just say, I try my best to control it, but why? Well, I don't have to, it's just us. And a couple of dudes in the back here are already put up with me all day, so it'll be fine. Uh, I also have some other things you should know about me. I, I told you I was loud. I told you I cry. I get migraine headaches. Like I bet a lot of you guys do too. Um, I feel great. Again, I feel fine today. Uh, one of my fears every time I get a headache is that it is hurting my memory. I feel like there are these little things that explode and I'll never get that memory back. And so I, every time I get a headache, I like make it worse because I'm laying there going like, what am I never going to remember, <laughs> right? I'm the worst at torturing myself. Um, and one thing that I do, and I brought him to show you, do you guys do this with your Christmas cards? No. no? Do you guys do Christmas cards in Southern Alabama? You're barely saying yes. Listen, I am always so afraid of forgetting things that I have to have things that help me remember. And so every year when I get Christmas cards, I just put them on a ring and I put the year on the front. And then at Christmas, I set them all out around my house so that, we, so that I can look through them and see how kids have grown, how families have changed, and remember the people who thought of me in those particular years, right? I just love them. It's, it's one of my favorite things about the Christmas season is starting to get Christmas cards and having those around. I just, I just adore them. And it's important to me as well because it reminds me of where these people are in their lives and in my life. And then I, it helps me remember. And that, as you have heard, is something we're talking about tonight, is the power of remembering and why it matters that we remember. Because it really, really does matter. I'm going to tell you more about those Christmas cards in just a second. I, I just need tangible reminders in my life a lot that, um, that things are worth remembering. It's why we take pictures. It's why you have 13,000 pictures on your phone. And like our grandmothers would be like, you what? They're on your telephone? 13,000? And you're like, yeah, like I take, I take every selfie. I take eight of them. And so, and then I forget to delete, right? And so then when it is time to delete, you're embarrassed by yourself. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm you. I know. It's also why I love journaling. Do you guys journal? Some of us, yeah. It's just a time of year where everybody kind of kicks up those disciplines like that, where everybody kind of starts doing those things, where we start recording. I have this, I keep doing this motion because I have this Tupperware of journals at my house that are about yay big. And I will tell you, on the, they're all mostly written in. I started journaling about 20 years ago when I was in college. And so they are all, there's probably a lot of them in there. And on the top, it's taped a $20 bill. And I'll tell you why. Because everyone in my life, my small group, my best friends, all the people, oh, I'm single. We can talk about it later. But um, so it's all my people who know that uh, there's a $20 bill there because when I die, I want all those journals to be burned and I want you to make s'mores with that money. Like go buy marshmallows, go buy chocolate, go buy the graham crackers. And I want you to make s'mores over my journals because I don't want anybody reading them, right? Like I write the books you can read. My journal has the guy's real name. Am I right? You know? <laughs> Like the book, I changed his name. In my journal, I did it. And so he doesn't want that published any more than I do, right? And so I want all my journals burned. I don't want any of them being read, but they matter to me. Because what I do when I go through those journals, when I pull them out, what they do is they remind me of what has happened, Right? They remind me of scriptures. It's also one of the reasons that in my Bible, let me see if I can find one. In my Bible, I have dates and places next to certain scriptures. Because every time I go there, I want to go there. I want to remember, oh, I read that. This one says Lake Placid. I went to, on a mission trip to Lake Placid, New York when I was in college. And I go, oh yeah, I remember where we were sitting when we read that. Right, And so I write it in there and I write it in my journals because I want to remember. And the reason I need to remember is because I forget. And I wouldn't say that I forget God. For those of us in the room who like have been in a relationship with God and know him, it's not that I forget God, it's that I forget what he's really like. Because what happens to me, and I wonder if it happens to you too, what happens to me is life starts telling me who God is. 
And my experiences, these things that I'm going through start saying, yeah, yeah, I know the Bible says um, God's kind, but that's not what you're experiencing. So whether it is a relationship thing for you or finances or the weather, right? Whether it's your bank account, the diagnosis, when the job opportunity passes you by or the relationship passes you by or there's a severing with your kids or your grandkids, you can start believing that, that your circumstances are going to tell you who God is instead of what you've learned of who God is. Right? And that, that gets really concerning because our circumstances, um, I hate to tell you this, our circumstances lie. <laughs> right? The circumstances you are living in, um, they aren't telling you the truth of who God is. It's part of the deal living on a fallen planet. Like Jennifer talked about, it started in that whole Genesis thing that Adam and Eve, we owe them a big high five for getting us in this situation, right? It's like, thanks a million. I hope you guys, ha- I hope they're at the front door of heaven and we can get to all go, oh, hi. I've got some words, Eve. <laughs> apparently, again, I haven't mommed, but apparently childbirth is terrible. And in Genesis, it says that's Eve's fault, so y'all can just take it straight to her when you get there. Right? And so you just go like, uh, all these circumstances, all these things that I'm living, the tragedy happens, the situation goes sideways, and you go, God, how could you? Who are you? Why did you let that happen? I mean, haven't we all said, why did you let that happen? Of course. Of course we have. I have. Today. Right? Uh, about two years ago, I've been at the same church in Nashville for, uh, I've been in, I grew up in Atlanta. I've been in Nashville for 10 years. I've been at the same church for about eight years. And two years ago, the senior pastor literally walked up on a Sunday. We are a church of a couple of thousand people, five different campuses in Tennessee. And he just said, I'm done. And he left and never came back. And I, uh, I have never seen a people fall apart like that. And we had this opportunity and this option and this thought is, is God who he says God is or is God who God says God is? Because my circumstances say that God leaves. Right? My circumstances say that, that God is not generous. That he's not kind. And when things get hard, do you believe that God is who he says he is or do you forget? I tend to forget. So I journal a lot. And I collect a lot of things. I try not to be a hoarder, though I have a lot of respect for them. Um, (laughs) I really do. I believe that hoarders are special because... They have found a way to keep everything they want, (laughs) right? And I love salt and pepper shakers. Don't give me any. It is not, I mean, nobody, I'm trying to get married, right? Like, I don't need more salt and pepper shakers. I don't need him to pick me up for a date and be like, wow, that is a collection. Have a nice night. (laughs) All right, so don't gift them to me. But I like that. And then I watch the show Hoarders and I get how people just keep collecting things and collecting things and taking more things in. And you know what's true is they're never satisfied. Because what their circumstances are saying is if you had more, it's never true. <laughs> Every year I, I had a friend of mine tell me recently that he had set this budget of how much money he was going to make the next year because he knew that would make him happy. That would be what he wanted. And I was like, joke's on you. Because let me tell you what I know. There isn't a person in your life that's missing that's going to make you happy when they join your life. There isn't a dollar amount in your life that's missing that's going to make you happy when it gets here. There isn't a job. There's just not a thing. You're never going to be satisfied. We're never going to be fully satisfied unless we let God do it first. Right? And then he gifts us the rest. He gifts us the rest. And they make your life better. And the, the dollar amount, I'll take it. Add the zeros. Right? Yes, I'll take it so we can be generous and have the things we want and our people can have the things that they want. But, but I can't ask that to tell me who God is. I want God to tell me who God is. My circumstances don't always look the way I want them to. I would imagine that's true for you. Here's the thing is that um, I know you want things like I want things. If it was easier to get this microphone off my head and if we had time and I could pass it around and I could say to you, what do you want that you don't have? You've got an answer. We all do. How do I know? Because you ate lunch. And what do you want? Dinner. 
didn't you already get to eat today? Are you joking, Annie? Right? Like, how do I know you? Because you own a shirt and you still bought another shirt. Right? We're just wanters. I'm not here to tell you not to want. I'm here to tell you we should want well. Learn how to want well. Learn how to want believing that God is who he says he is. Remember who he really is and then want what you want. Want what you want. That's okay. You're allowed to want another shirt, sister. I'm allowed to want that cape, Margaret. Just fling it. I may need it before I'm done tonight. I'll just keep you on. Just, I'll just say if I do. My birthday is July 7th. I'm working on making it a national holiday. I'll keep in touch about it. But I really love it. Pretty much, if you can hear my voice, you're invited to my party. That's how it goes. We do my birthday every year at the baseball game in Nashville, like the professional baseball game. Because I was like, just get a ticket. Just come on and you'll find me. I'm roaming around and all my friends come and all their kids come. It's so fun. Uh, But my birthday is July 7th. And last year, last summer, I woke up and I was still single. (laughs) And that was weird. Um, Because you don't think you're going to wake up in your mid-30s and wake up in a house by yourself on your birthday. Now, the grass is always greener. For sure, I got to sleep as long as I wanted to. For sure, it's quiet. When I leave, like right now on the weekend, when I go home tomorrow, my house is going to look just like I left it. (laughs) Nothing happened, hopefully. (laughs) Right? If all goes as planned, it looks the same 12 hours ago that it'll look in 24. But it's not alive. You know? And and I woke up and I, I remember thinking, is this the best you can do? To the Lord, not to me. I knew I was doing the best I could do. <laughs> Listen, I'm showing up. But I didn't think he was doing the best he could do. Have you felt that before? <laughs> hey, I, I'm doing my part. Are you? And I thought, are you even kind? Why, why would you do this to someone? What does it hurt you, Lord, to give me what I want? And so many people who follow me and are friends with me and all these things love hearing my stories of being single. (laughs) Yeah, me too. And and I have said to God before, do you care more about my ministry than you care about me? And I start to forget who he really is. Because sometimes you go, do you care more about that person than you care about me? Do you care more about that situation than you care about me? And I woke up that day and I thought, I don't, I don't think you're doing this right. This isn't how a birthday is supposed to go. And I forgot who he was. And we always have that choice. And especially when a new year starts, when we're kicking off something new, whether you want to or not, whether you go, I don't do resolutions. I know, I know, but you can't help but feel that thing you feel in January of like, okay, how do we want to be different in December? You just can't, it just is in us. It's just the way culture's built us. I apologize on behalf of everyone. It's just how it goes, right? We're all going to feel that a little bit. And so right now, my, I, I want to tell you why you need to remember God. This is why. I, I'm going to read you a scripture. I'm going to read it from the message version. It's just a little bit different than the NIV. So uh, this is Lamentations 3, and I'm going to start in verse 19. I'll never forget the trouble the utter lostness, the taste of ashes, the poison I've swallowed. So dramatic. I remember it all. Oh, how well I remember the feeling of hitting the bottom. But there's one thing I remember, and remembering I keep a grip on hope. That's it. That's it. That's why we have to remember, because the only way you're going to keep a grip on hope is if you remember who God really is. That's the only way you're going to have hope. Because when we forget who he is, we forget there's any hope. And and I don't know about you, but in my life, the times when I live without hope are when I make the decisions I regret massively. Either inside or outside. Either in secret or in public. It is when you see me acting a fool that I am without hope. Because I've decided no one else can take care of me. I will take care of me. I have no hope in anything else except myself. Scripture continues. This is what he says. But there's one thing I remember, and remembering I keep a grip on hope. God's loyal love couldn't have run out. 
His merciful love couldn't have dried up. They're created new every morning. How great your faithfulness. I'm sticking with God. I say it over and over. He's all I've got left. Man, I was flipping through some journals recently, some that were like um, kind of five months in a row of three journals. I was being very dramatic at the time. To fill three journals in five months, I was like, I have to say more and more. (laughs) New journal, someone give me a new journal. And I was flipping through them and I realized over and over in those journals, I said to God, you're all I've got left. You're all I've got left. I heard a pastor recently that was coming through Nashville. I went and heard him speak. And, and he, one of the things he said is, um, I don't know how this is going to work out, but I'm here. And I got home that day and I started a new journal. And I went through and I said, I'm scared about this one part of this thing that's going on at work, but I'm here. I don't know how this relationship is going to turn out, but I'm here. I'm worried about my health and how I feel about myself, but I'm here. Right, And now, six months later, I'm going like, oh, God was already there. He was already there. And now I can look back and remember, and therefore I have hope. I have something to hold on to because in my own handwriting, in my own hand, I see his faithfulness. I believe your story, but I believe my handwriting. Right? Like you can tell me how God showed up for you. All those pictures they showed. Did you read at the beginning of that video? Every picture they showed during the song, remember Lauren Daigle's song. Every picture they showed was from one of you of a moment you remembered God. I believe you. I also believe my own handwriting. I believe myself in the days where I don't see what God's going to do. And then I believe it when I see it. I went to Israel a couple of years ago. The Garden of Gethsemane was actually my favorite place. Have y'all been to Israel yet? I say yet because you need to go. We need to just take a trip. Can we just go? Okay. We're just going to go next time. Uh, It's unbelievable. Someone told me before I went that going to Israel, Israel is like when you go from reading the Bible in black and white to color. And I grew up in the church, so I've been reading the Bible for a really long time. But, and I, I didn't understand how that could be true until I swam in the Sea of Galilee. And I like know what the bottom feels like. The rocks are like the size of your fist. So they're just small enough that, you, that they like hurt when you step on them. But they're not, they're not pebbles, but they're not so big you slip on them either. And so as I'm exiting the Sea of Galilee and I'm standing on those, I'm thinking about John 21 where Peter sees Jesus on the beach and rises. It's the resurrected Jesus. And he jumps out of the boat and he swims 100 yards and then he runs to Jesus. And I'm like, I know what he felt like on the bottom of his feet. Right? Like, that's why we got to go to Israel. Because the Bible becomes this thing you can, like, smell and see. And the Garden of Gethsemane changed me. Because you stand there in the place, uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, where olive trees grow. And this is the truth about olive trees. Is if they don't get uprooted, they grow in the exact same spot every 500 years. They grow and live for 500 years. And then it dies. And another one comes. So you're standing four trees ago, Jesus was there. <laughs> right? And you're like, Okay. That's real. You know, and then you're reading in the Bible. You're in Matthew. I'm in Matthew. And and I'm standing there going like, you literally decided right here that I didn't have to live with this forever. That the sin that so easily entangles would not actually tangle me up and would not take me down. And we got, there's two places that they are, they're not totally sure where Jesus was crucified, so they've decided there's two places, fine. And one of them is in like this cathedral that's really dark and you weave through it, it's like black and gold, it's really beautiful, but it's kind of dark. And the other is called the garden tomb. And it is bright and beautiful and you can sit outside. And I was like, for sure, I feel Jesus here. <laughs> it was this one, no question. I feel like he's telling me just is so breezy, right? There's like a well that you can draw water from. It's lovely. So lovely, if you will, for a place where people are buried. And, and there's actually like a tomb that you can walk into that looks, they say, is like where Jesus could have been buried. And, and that you take communion. And they give you these little tiny cups. And I still have mine. And it sits on my dresser. I see it every day because I don't want to forget It sits on my dresser and you take communion. I want to read for you um, what it says in 1 Corinthians. This is Paul talking about taking communion. 
And this is 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 25. Again, I'm going to read it in the message version. A lot of us who have gone to church for a while are kind of used to hearing some of these scriptures. So if we switch the version, it's the same scripture. It just has a little bit of a different ring. So I like the way this one reads. Let me go over with you again exactly what goes on in the Lord's Supper and why it is so centrally important. I received my instructions from the master himself and passed them on to you. The master, Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, took bread. And having given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. Do this to what? Remember me. Do this to remember me. Jesus knew we would forget. And so he built this thing into the church system, into our calendar that says, whenever your church decides, once a month, once a week, do this so you don't forget what I've done. Do this to remember me. Right? He knew. He knew we needed this reminder. He knew that the world was going to try to tell us who Jesus is. And he went, have a piece of bread and a little bit of juice and remember me. Remember who I really am, what I really did. Because that is, if you've heard this, that is the gospel message, is that what happened with Adam and Eve does not actually define us anymore. What defines us is after we, he said, do this to remember me. And then he continues on, actually, after supper, he did the same with the cup. The cup is my blood, my new covenant with you. Each time you drink this cup, remember me. He does that. They go to the Garden of Gethsemane where he prays. And where actually, uh, my pastor, and national pastor, Kevin, says that's where we were rescued. Because Jesus decided to do it there. Right? He decided to do it. We're going to talk about that a little bit again tomorrow. But... Jesus decided right there to do for us. And then he's arrested and then he's crucified. And when he's crucified, he takes all of that stuff that Adam and Eve did and and, and erases it. He just replaces it with his own blood. Right? So all the sins that have so easily entangled you and so easily entangled me, the ones that when we stop and think about what makes you feel the grossest are gone. They're gone. And we don't have to remember those anymore. Because of what he did for us. So how do you remember God? I'm going to make it real easy for you. First of all, you have to learn who he is. I can't ask you to remember my mom because you've never met my mom. You don't know what she looks like. She kind of looks like me. You don't know what she sounds like. She sounds way more Southern than me. I can't ask you to remember my dad. He's funnier than me. But I can't ask you to remember any of them. And and actually, I can't ask you to remember me, though. I kind of wish you would. Um... But you can't ask to be reminded, to remind yourself of someone you don't know. So you've got to learn who he is. Because when you get into scripture, it's going to tell you who he is. And then you go like, God, I I don't have enough money in the bank. I'm not sure you're going to provide. And then you go, actually, your name in the Bible is Jehovah Jireh. You provide. And so I don't know how you're going to do it. And I don't know if you're going to do it in a way that I like it. But I know you're going to do it. Because I remember who you are. I remember you now. You know? It's like when someone, when you see someone you haven't seen in a long time and your friend goes, don't you remember? That's Carol. Carol, she is my sister's friend. And you go, oh, Carol, I remember Carol. That's what happens with God. When you study scripture, it's one of the reasons I love She Reads Truth. If y'all know She Reads Truth and for men, He Reads Truth. They just give us Bible plans where we just read and, and you just read the scripture every day. And then read like a little devotional, but you just read a scripture every day. And then I go like, oh yeah, I almost forgot that God takes care of everybody. But then the scripture actually says God takes care of everybody. And when I start to feel like other people are getting things that I want, scripture reminds me that God doesn't have favorites. He doesn't show favoritism. And so I go, okay, my circumstances try to tell me I don't matter to you. What you say is that you don't have any favoritism. You don't show any favoritism. I am one of yours. I am your child. You will take care of me. That is why we need to be in scripture. That's why we have to know who he is. It's it's showing up like this. Like Jennifer said, starting off your year like this. When you start your year like this, you're going to remember something about who he is. I promise. I I feel free to promise you this. Y'all can, Lisa, you can fix me tomorrow when you teach if I do this wrong. He'll show you who he is by the end of this weekend if you want him to. It's yours to have. He... He's, he's waiting on you to invite him to do it. I mean, he'll show you who he is if you want him to. And so then you go, I remember that January in 2019. In fact, I wrote it in my journal. 
And after I wrote it in my journal, I called my sister who doesn't live here, but I called her and I said, um, hey, God did this thing for me. So it's showing up at church. It's reading your scripture. And maybe this is all really brand new to you. And you're like, it's hard for me to get to know somebody that I don't know at all. And I'm like, I hear you. Tell us, tell us. We can help you. T- we can tell you. I'll tell you where to start. Start in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Start with Jesus because he was, he's the word made flesh. He's God in human form. So you're getting everything you need to understand who God is. You can just look at Jesus. That's what Jesus said is that I just do what my father tells me to do. So if you want to get to know him, if you want to see what he's like, start Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you don't have a Bible, there's an app, version. It's free. Or we can get you one. But that's how... We learn who he is. And then once you learn who he is, you have to record who he's been to you. You have to record it. You got to write it down in your own handwriting. I don't care if it's journals. I don't care if it's notes on your phone. I built Spotify. Spotify? It's a different thing. You don't know it. Um, I built Spotify playlists for whatever season I'm in where a song will pop up. And I'll, a, a perfect example. Well, that remember song is a great example. Tonight, you could open Pandora, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever you use, and start a Remember God playlist. And you plug that one in. And then the next song that comes on, you go, this is just like that one. Plug it in. God will help you build a playlist. If you want a playlist, it tells you who he is. Right? There's so many songs. Meredith Andrews has a new song out right now that I'm like, repeat, repeat, repeat. It's very good. So you could put that on there. I mean, just build a playlist. I, uh, pictures are another great one. So let me tell you about my birthday. I wake up that morning. And, and I am not satisfied, as you know. And I've said some borderline unkind things to God, which actually he handles fine, just so you know. He handles it fine. He doesn't go anywhere. He just takes it. And then he tells me the truth. He takes my untruth and goes, okay, I hear you. Now I'm going to tell you back what's actually true. And so during the day, I kind of like worked through some stuff. And by the end of the day, uh, my birthday was on a Saturday. The next day was a Sunday. That's how the calendar works. Um, every time, bizarrely, it's never not worked like that. And I texted my core group of friends in Nashville are all families, moms with kids and husbands. And we have, it's so fun. There's like six of us total. We are in a small group on Monday nights. Um, do you know what else happens on Monday nights? The bachelor. Um, and so we gather together around entertainment and but we also talk about the Lord and we talk about our lives and like, it, it, we just, it, it's what we do. And, and so I texted all of them that night and I said, um, you know, I would love for your kids to sing me happy birthday. Could I bring a cookie cake tomorrow afternoon? Could we go somewhere? Can we all gather at somebody's house and I'll bring my own cookie cake and would your kids sing to me? They're, oh my gosh, of course we want, you know, like we'd already talked about celebrate my birthday and I wasn't springing my birthday on them. I tell people as freely as I told you. I'm like, July 7th, get ready. So they knew. And they said, yeah, of course. So one of the girls said, yeah, come over to our house. And so I went to the cookie place and I'm a big soccer fan. And so I said to the girl, I was like, I want like a red and white soccer ball and like red and white around the edges. She was like, what's the little boy's name? I was like, oh, it's my cake. And then things get weird because then you're like, Happy birthday to me? No, that feels weird showing up with a cake that's like, happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, Annie also feels stupid because like third person birthday cake arriving, that's weird. And so I just went, happy birthday. I went, happy birthday, and that was it. And so I I get the cake, and I go over there, and and we set it all up, and all the kids are there, and they're running like crazy. And one of the moms says, "Uh, nobody gets any cake until you take a picture with Annie. I thought, you're smart. And uh, so I brought that picture to show you. Right. And since this picture, we've added three more. So we are some pro creators. Um, (laughs) Here's the thing about this picture. This reminds me who God is because I do not have family. Like I thought I'd have family, but I have family. I could not physically have birthed all these people. I'm not Octomom, right? Like it's not happening. There's no way I could have done this. Only God could have given a family like this. Ephesians 3.20 says that God will give us more than we could ask or imagine. I couldn't have imagined this. And he went like, I hear your prayers and I'm gonna answer. 
And also, I'm going to answer like this. And here's the other great thing. I don't like have to change a diaper. And like when they cry, I return them from whence they came. Right? I mean, like that helps me to remember God. I mean, these two on the end cannot behave for nothing. Can you see it? I mean, those two boys are just the worst. I love them so much. Ollie on the end, just like, he's just the biggest mess in the world. I just adore him. I think they're so funny. Last week, uh, two weeks ago, I was over at one of the family's houses. There's one who lives real close to me, and I uh, just stopped by most days. And I sat down on the couch just to watch TV, and one of the kids came and sat with me, and I had my phone in my hand because I'm a person. And, um, and I took this. I brought one more picture to show you. I took this that day as well, right? Here's the thing. I wrote this on Instagram when I post this. His mom is in the background. You see her little dark hair. Her name is also Annie. You should know that all those children call me crazy Annie. <laughs> because there's another one and she's not this. And uh, so they call me Crazy Annie all the time. Like it's, it's like it is my name, Crazy Annie. It's just the funniest thing in the world. Other adults, like new friends will come in and they'll be like, this is Crazy Annie. And I'm like, there's a thing, there's two Annies. It's true. It's just true. Right, literally right now, if you could see both my knees are skinned because I played too hard on New Year's Eve with them. I was like rolling around at the farm and skinned my knees like a 12-year-old. And it hurt for like ever because I'm old. Um, but what I wrote on Instagram when I posted this picture is I said, I can make a list for you of the things that I want that I do not have. But the longer list are the things that I have that I do not deserve. Right? I do not. Now, here's what's true. You better make both those lists. Do not pretend like there are things you, that you don't want anything. Don't be Pollyanna like everything's fine and everything's good. What a waste. God cannot show you how great he is unless you show him your pain. Right? He actually shows up in a beautiful way when you will tell the truth about your pain. So you make that list of the things you want that you don't have, but you also make that list of the things you have that you don't deserve because that's how you remember who he is. Right? This moment reminds me of who God is. God gives me more than I could ask or imagine, even if it doesn't look like I thought it was going to look. Let me tell you about these Christmas cards. These are not uh, people that I know personally. Some of you may know this story if you follow me on Instagram. These are all people who, and remember God, I talk about that two years ago, I sent Christmas cards as a single woman for the first time because I was tired of being left out. I was like, that looks so fun. I, I don't care that I don't have a house and a dude and kids and a fence. I just want to send Christmas cards. And so I said to people, if you send a Christmas card for the first time this year, will you send me one? And I'm not kidding you. This is probably half of what we got. And these are people who do not have everything they want, but they have found a way to remember God in what they have. There's one girl, so many of them are like, this girl is, it says, love Michelle. It's just Michelle. It's just Michelle. And they would write these notes on the back, right? These, they're like, I've never done this before. And I, like, have we all been friends long enough? This has nothing to do with me, right? This has nothing to do with me. This is people realizing that God is who he says he is and they are celebrating it. There's one girl who I, it's not in this pack because we didn't get to hole punch it before we left the office, but it's her by herself on a roller coaster and it's her on Splash Mountain and it just says, Merry Christmas from your favorite single rider. I was like, you're brilliant. You're brilliant. I was like, Jesus, give her a husband before me. She earned it. That's funny. That's just funny, right? That is just good. But I thought, I want to take this everywhere because I want you to see that across the country and actually a little bit around the world, because there's one from Russia, uh, people are believing that God is who he says he is. And they're going like, I'm going to send a card about it. I'm going to send a card about it because I do not have everything I want, but I have found a way to celebrate what God has given me because they remember who he actually is. And there's been, tra oh man, there's one girl. Well, you'll never know, so I'll just tell you. There's one girl. Who, a lot of them come with letters. You know, they wrote little letters to me about, about why they decided to do it. She's like, we've been trying to get pregnant for years. She's like, every year it's just me and my husband on the card. Every year it's just me and my husband on the card. And she was like, and the day before I'm mailing this to you, we found out the IVF worked. And I am sitting in my office bawling, bawling. You know, and, and, and I don't know how to get back in touch with her. So I'm like, 
Good luck. <laughs> I'm praying for your baby. I don't know where you are. I don't have your email. Right, but I mean, that's what the day before she mailed, she's like, no one else getting this card knows that God has done the thing we've asked him to do. Come on. Right, but she's like, but we just keep sending cards because we believe that he is who he says he is. You have to record who he has been to you. That's why I'm gonna keep all of these because when I forget in my own life, when my story, when my handwriting doesn't tell me enough, this will tell me. This will tell me. Because I'll go, look what he's done for all of them. He did it for all of them. Every one of them. They have friends. They have pets they love. So many girls and their cats. So many girls and their cats. Jenna, am I telling the truth? My sister Jenna, I'm like, so many girls and their cats. Which I'm like, yes, do that. Be you. If he's allergic to cats, he needs to know from the start. It, this helps me remember who God really is. Right? This helps me remember who he really is. And then, once you have gotten to know who he is, once you have recorded who he has been, you have to believe what you know even when you don't see it. Believe in the dark what you knew in the light. Here's the thing. You know in your house how you can go to the bathroom without turning the light on? You know why you can do that? Because when the light's on, you know where to go. So when the light's off, you still know where to go if you don't forget. Right? When I'm in a hotel that I've never been in before, which is like every weekend, <laughs> I always have to wake and go, where am I? Where's the bathroom? What city am I in? But in my own house, I can find it pretty easily. Because I've been there in the light. Where have you been in the light? You think you're in the darkness now. What, how did you walk this when you knew there was light? Because you can walk this. You can walk this. Because you know how to get where you're going. Because you know what it looks like in the light. And you got to remember that. I want to tell you one more quick thing. I, I am, uh, one of the things we're doing at Crosspoint with our, our whole church body is going through the um, Bible in chronological order this year. Going to try to read the whole Bible. When I say the whole church party is doing it, what we're saying is like, hey, if anybody wants to read the Bible in chronological order, I'm sure a lot of people are not doing it. But, uh, so I'm not like everyone in Nashville reads the Bible. So... <laughs> It's very Jesus-y. Um, but I am not great at remembering to do that, but I am great in the mornings while I'm getting ready, listening to the audio Bible, right? So I'll do my time and, and drink my tea and read whatever. And then when I'm getting ready, I'm listening to the day's audio Bible. It's usually like 11 or 12 minutes. It's not bad at all. Bad at all. It's not, it's not gonna ruin your life. You'll be fine. Everybody be tough. It's 12 minutes. I'm gonna get in trouble with God for that one later. Um, I'm really going to need a cape about that. Um, but yesterday we were in Genesis 9 and when this happened, it, when I had never heard this before. And you have heard the story of Noah, right? Noah and the ark, it's raining, it, the flood, blah, blah, blah. You know the story of Noah and the ark. And then the story we always tell is that when the water receded and they all got out, what did God put in the sky? A rainbow. He put a rainbow in the way I was taught it, probably the way you were taught it, is that God put a rainbow in the sky so that we would remember that he would never what? Flood the earth again. Let me actually read you what it says in this scripture. You're going to lose your cookies. Hang on. Okay. This is Genesis 9 verse 12. Uh, is that where I want to start? Yeah. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I'm making between me and you and every living creature with you. A covenant for all generations to come. This is God talking. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you. Do you know why we see rainbows? Because it is God reminding himself. Does that blow your mind? God did not put the rainbow in the sky for us. He did it for him. I know. What do we do with that? I don't know. I just think it's unbelievable that the scripture still blows my mind. And I've heard Noah's story since before I could read a book. And I was always taught that the rainbow was about me remembering. And actually what God says is every time you see that rainbow, know that I remember. 
right? He will not flood the earth because he remembers. So when you pick a thing that helps you remember, when you grab onto something, whether it's a word or whether it's a rainbow or whether it's a flower or whether it's a butterfly or whether it's cards, you can go, I'm doing this because I'm made in the image of God and God does this too. Is that not unreal? He, I mean, he says it again. I'll just say it to you again. He says, I'll remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. He will remember. So next time you hear in your head, God's forgotten me, what you can actually know is he remembers. He remembers. He has not forgotten you because he remembers. Doesn't that just blow your mind? I don't even know what to do with that. At least I don't know what to do with that. Trevor, I don't know what to do with that. I need a cape. Um, I just... I do not know what to do with the idea that our whole lives we thought the rainbow was about us. It was never about us. The rainbow was never about us. It was for us to remember that he's going to remember. Okay, good night. Listen. Where's Pastor Aaron? Aaron, y'all can come on back. We're going to worship a little bit more. And there's uh, prayer ministry teams that will be up here for us tonight. If this is a new thing to you, don't miss a chance to get prayed for. Because there's like not a thing more powerful than prayer. Prayer changes things. It is the tool. Here's another great thing. Do you know who came up with prayer? Not us. God decided that we would pray and it would change his heart. He came up with prayer. So we can say to him, God, you created this system where where you listen and it moves you. And I've got some stuff. And maybe for you, you've never in your life uh, known Jesus or had any kind of relationship with him. And you're like, I want to know this guy. There are going to be prayer teams up here that can pray along with you and help you make that first step and tell you what happens next because it just gets better. Here's the thing. I don't want you to feel like I'm, this is false advertising. It doesn't make your problems go away. It just means you're not alone in them anymore. It just means you're not alone. And that thing you feel when you're trying to fall asleep at night where you feel there is no peace, there probably isn't if you don't know Jesus. But once you do, he says, in this world you'll have troubles, but take heart because he overcame the world. And there are others of us that um, this year you're ready to make a different decision. You've walked with him somewhat or in some way and you're like, I want more. Come up here and by yourself you can kneel down. Is that okay? I just said that. Yeah. By yourself you can kneel down. You can, you and your buddy can pray. I don't care. But if you want something to be different, we got a place for that. There is something about bringing what you have to offer to the altar. Because, you know, right before God made that promise to, uh, to Noah, Noah off, made an offering to God, a burnt offering to God and, God, and then God made a covenant with Noah. So you may need to bring something to him. Maybe you have disappointments. Maybe you have things that you thought for sure by 2019, fill in the blank. I know. So maybe you just need to come say that to him. You can say all that. He'll handle it. Because he, he knows. He knows. So can we all stand up together and I'll pray for us. And then um, if the ministry teams would just be available. And if you just need some time and some space, um, you've got it. But I'm going to pray for us real quick. God, we thank you. Um, we thank you that you are who you say you are. And that you, you set this thing up. You put the rainbow in the sky so you'd remember. So that we would know that you are not a God who forgets. So God, for any of my friends tonight who feel forgotten, would the rainbow remind them who you really are? God, we want to remember. We want to remember who you are. We want to know you and record it. And we don't want to forget it when it feels dark. So would you stamp something in each of us tonight that changes us? That shows us who you really are. 
And we just say, we believe you. While we're waiting on the thing we don't have, while we're working through the tragedy, while we're feeling pain we didn't know we'd ever feel, uh, all that is true. And also we're just going to squeak out that we believe you are who you say you are. We believe that you are who you say you are. You are rescuing even when we can't see it. You are redeeming when we can't see it. You are healing when we can't see it. You are working. And so we just say that that is who we know you are. And we will keep saying that until it's light again. In Jesus' name we pray.